folks. Thanks, Thanks for joining. joining. Today we're going to go over how to run a one-way between subjects ANOVA, as well as get at the eta squared or the effect size with it. So I'm going to start off today. I've got about 189 cases total. They've been randomly assigned to and divided into three different groups, three different food groups. And the way the experiment worked, the design of the experiment was that the after the assignment into the three different groups, each group ate something different. Group one ate a broccoli salad, group two ate a turkey sandwich, and group three ate a piece of chocolate cake. Then they waited 30 minutes, and then they took a test. And we're looking to see if the, the test scores the average of the test scores for each group are significantly different than the average of the test scores for the other groups. And this is what we're going to be doing. So first off, we see here that we have groups 1, 2, and 3, but when I click up here, switching it from the values to the labels, we don't have anything happening. So I want to go into my data. I mean, my, I'm sorry, I was in my data view. I want to go into my variable view, and I want to assign my value labels. So if the value in the data was 1, then I want to label that broccoli salad because that's what the group 1 ate. And I'm not sure that I've spelled broccoli right, but we're just going to be kind to me today. <laughs> uh, if the value in the data is 2, then I'm going to give it the label of turkey sandwich. And I'm going to add that. And if the value in the data is 3, then I'm going to give it oops, the label of chocolate cake. Okay, let's go back and look at our data and make sure we captured it. Oh, we did. I can already see it. So if I click between the two here, I can see that my value labels have now been attached. Let's jump right in. Let's run our one-way ANOVA. We're going to go to Analyze and then Compare Means. Oops. And then we're going to come down here to our one-way ANOVA and click it. So for our dependent variable, our dependent variable is our test score because we're, we're testing to see if the test scores depend on what food group, what food participants ate prior to their exam. So the food group we're going to put over here in the factor. We're going to want to absolutely run a post talk, which we always have to run when we run an ANOVA. And the reason why we run our post talk is because when you have an ANOVA, there's more than two groups. There are more than two groups. And we don't know where the difference would lie if there are three groups. Is it between group A and group B, group A and group C, group B and group C? Are all of them different from each other? We don't know. So an ANOVA in general tells us that there's a significant difference between the groups, if there is, but it doesn't tell us which groups. So we always run our post talk. And I happen to know that our, our three different groups all have a similar count to each of them. Each group has 63 participants. They were evenly divided. And because they're evenly divided, I'm going to go ahead and run a Tukey as my post talk. If my three groups had very different numbers uh, of participants in each of them, I would pick the Sheffy. But for now, I'm going to run my Tukey. I also want to go over here into Options, and I want to click on Descriptives. You always want your descriptives because we need to report those as well. And I might as well just grab a means plot just so we can look at it. I'm going to hit OK. And here are my descriptives. I can see, again, I had 63 participants in each of the three groups. The group with broccoli salad has a mean of 57.46 for their exam. The turkey sandwich had an average of 54.76, and the chocolate cake had an average of 54.13 with their standard deviations. When I look at my ANOVA, I can see that my actual F statistic is 3.466. My degrees of freedom are 2 and 186, because I want the degrees of freedom for both between groups and within groups. And I can see that my significance is 0.033, which means my p-value is 0.033, which is lower than the, the alpha level set at 0.05. So this is significant, that there was a significant difference between one or two or three of these groups from the others. And in order to find out where it is, I'm going to look at my post talk. I'm going to look at the difference between broccoli salad and turkey sandwich. They had a mean difference of 2.6. 
Their significance is 0.113. That is not below 0.05. So there's not a significant difference in test scores between the people that ate the broccoli salad and the people that ate the turkey sandwich. If I look at broccoli salad to chocolate cake, I see that their mean difference is 3.33 and their significance is 0.037. This is below 0.05. So there is a significant difference between the, the, the average scores of the group for that ate broccoli salad and the average scores of the group that ate chocolate cake. And let's see, we've done broccoli and turkey and broccoli and chocolate, but we haven't done turkey and chocolate. So let's look at the differences between turkey sandwich and chocolate cake. That's the lower line. So there's difference in their average scores between the two groups. It's 0.635 and their significance or their p-value is 0.884. So they are definitely not significantly different from each other. So what we see is a significant difference between the group that had broccoli salad and the group that had chocolate cake, and that there is no significant difference between broccoli salad and turkey sandwich, and no significant difference between turkey sandwich and chocolate cake. But with all of these, oh, sorry, one more just to discuss. Uh, we can just kind of see this visually. Here's the average scores. So the average for chocolate cake and for turkey sandwich are both down here between 54 and 55. And the average for broccoli salad is up here at about 57 point, 57 and a half. So the chocolate cake and the broccoli salad are significantly different from each other. And the other two are not significantly different from each other. But what we're missing is our effect size or our eta squared. So in order to run that, we have to run a second test. So we want to go into Analyze, and we want to go to Compare Means again. But instead of going down to the one-way ANOVA, we're actually going to come up here. We're just going to look at the means, and we need to assign our dependent and independent again. So my test score is my dependent, and which food group they were in, which group they were in, is our independent. And I want to go into Options. And I want to click on ANOVA table and ADA. There's the ADA, and this will give us also our ADA squared. I'm going to hit continue, and I'm going to hit OK. So you'll see here again, I get my mean and standard deviation for each of them, and they are the same. And then I get my ANOVA, again, all the same information that I had. I can't get my post hoc analysis here, which is why we don't just opt to run this instead. We need to run the first one because we get our post hoc information. Then we run this as a second test so that we can get, right here, the last thing we get is our eta and eta squared. And our eta squared is 0.036, and this is what our effect size is. So this is the size of the effect of test score, I'm sorry, of the size of the effect of food group on test score. And I thank you so much for joining me. If you have other questions about ANOVAs or wondering how to write them up, or just general questions about the differences between the different types of ANOVAs or the ANOVAs versus T-tests, feel free to watch some of my other videos and they cover all of those topics. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.